Oh, would not mind seeing Daredevil again. Historically, we've been light in that department. Hey, welcome back Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy, and you've probably already heard the news. Marvel is scrapping Daredevil Born Again and they're starting fresh. We need to take the whole line back to formula. Back to formula. Back to formula. Ah! But hang on, I'm gonna explain why this is actually a good thing. What, but I thought you liked Daredevil. Oh dude, I love Daredevil. So I'm really excited to see Marvel take a step back and do this show right. Now, a little later, I'm gonna bring in two Marvel experts, Screen Crush Editor-in-Chief Matt Singer and YouTuber Whitney Van Landingham so they can make sense of all this. But first, let me explain what the hell's actually going on here and why the Daredevil show is probably going to be awful. And a little later, I wanna talk about what I hope Marvel does with this because this could potentially remake the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the most exciting way possible. So we all know that Marvel has been great at making movies for more than a decade. What you may not know is how unconventionally this studio operates. Now normally, a studio hires a screenwriter, then finds a director to shoot the script. The director is then given the artistic license to create this story. But at Marvel, a central creative force, Kevin Feige, oversees deputy producers who each manage a different franchise, hiring screenwriters and directors to oversee these projects. Now the directors do have some artistic license, as long as they hit certain benchmarks that are already set for the franchise as a whole. Or what do you mean? Well, like how Ragnarok had to end with the Asgardians on the run and then they were running into Thanos' ship. But Taika Waititi was allowed to add in his own flourishes and style. Piss off, ghost! Now what's interesting about Marvel's approach is it's rare for a studio to have such a hands-on approach with its franchises. And Marvel was actually running more like a traditional TV show. Okay then, how do you run a TV show? Well, typically a TV show has a producer, usually the show's creator and head writer, called the showrunner. This person is the main creative force behind the show, like the director of a film. Some showrunners have become famous for a very distinct style. Aaron Sorkin, Dan Harmon, Terry Metalis, Vince Gilligan. These writers all have their own fans the way directors like Christopher Nolan or Steven Spielberg have their fans. Now, TV directors have a much smaller role in the creative process, executing the vision of the showrunner. So, over the years, Marvel actually evolved to work more like a giant TV show. But, according to The Hollywood Reporter and the new book, The Reign of Marvel Studios, Marvel stumbled when they began to make shows for Disney+. Plus. Sorry, give me just one second. Hey, what are, you, what are you doing on your phone anyways? Oh, sorry, man. This is Dungeon Hunter 6. They're the sponsor of this video. Er, what's Dungeon Hunter 6? Glad you asked. This is a free-to-play mobile ARPG with a unique hero collector feature rendered in a stunning fantasy style. The gameplay features fast-paced hack-and-slash combat style with various builds and skills to utilize as you fight big bosses. Er, I bet a game like that costs a lot of money. Nope, it is absolutely free-to-play. You can download it now using the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen if you're viewing on a PC. So, but one of my favorite things about this game is that like after you defeat a boss, you get to keep using that boss. You can summon up to three of them onto the battlefield to become members of your squad and perform combo skills. There are more than a hundred bosses to conquer and units are updated monthly, so the game literally never gets old. The new version of the game also has better graphics that are optimized for mobile with stunning skill animations, ensuring the best visual experience and smoothest combat on mobile devices. You can play with guildmates and fight in real-time guild wars, upgrade with a variety of skill triage, options, and even trade items via the auction system, which is perfect for when you accumulate stuff that you just don't need anymore. So you can download the game now for free on both Android and iOS using my link in the description or scan this QR code if you are viewing this on a PC. Use my link and you'll get a starter pack worth $50, including 10 summoning scrolls, one SSR lieutenant, the demonic wolf, plus one accessory pack. You can even use your game account to enter the launch lucky spin event for free to win great prizes like iPhone 15 Pro Max, PS5, Apple Watch, watch and more starting on October 15th. So check out our link in the description for details. Now back to what I was saying. Now normally when you make a TV show, you shoot a pilot. Oh, what's a pilot? I'll let Jules explain. Well, the way they pick TV shows is they make one show. That show's called a pilot. Then they show that one show to the people who pick shows. And on the strength of that one show, they decide if they want to make more shows. But Marvel just skipped this process, just green lighting shows without pilot scripts. They also broke with the traditional TV format, hiring writers to script the series, but then handing creative control over to the director. For most of their shows, this resulted in a story that felt more like a long movie that was just cut up into sections. That's why when you watch Secret Invasion, some episodes are only 30 minutes long, others are 45 minutes, and some of them just seem to stop in the middle of the story for no reason. 
reason. Okay, so wh why did Marvel change their TV format like that? Well, dude, because they're Marvel. They've been so innovative with everything else, they thought they could just reinvent TV on the fly. Like how Marvel movies have a very improvisational, let's fix it in post attitude. But you cannot just fix it in post with the TV show. When you're creating six to eight hours of programming, the production schedule is insane. So when the studio bosses started to tweak the shows, it caused all these post-production problems and reshoots that led to splits with the creative talent. I mean, some reports say Secret Invasion reshot basically the entire show. And we see this creative tension behind the scenes on Marvel shows, like on Moon Knight, when the show creator and writer Jeremy Slater quit and Muhammad Diab took over. And this might explain why so much of Moon Knight felt like a sliced up movie, with plot points repeating themselves over and over again. How many times can they search for an artifact that's going to lead them to the new place, you know? But Secret Invasion is when the Marvel method really broke down. The Hollywood Reporter piece is damning. Now, Marvel hired a TV legend, Kyle Bradstreet, who is a veteran of the excellent series Mr. Robot. He worked on writing the series for an entire year before Marvel replaced him with Brian Tucker because they wanted to take the series in a new, presumably lamer direction. No offense to Mr. Tucker, I don't think any of this is his fault. So then Ali Salim and another guy named Thomas Bakuza were then brought on as directors. And then, according to THR's article, the creative process collapsed last summer. According to the article, what happened next debilitated the productions as factions became entrenched and leaders vied for supremacy during Secret Invasion's pre-production in London. A Marvel insider was quoted as saying, it was weeks of people not getting along and it erupted. So by September of 2022, a good portion of the team had just been replaced and the Marvel executive overseeing the show, Chris Gary, is now expected to leave the studio when his contract expires this year. And by the way, we covered extensively what happened behind the scenes of Secret Invasion in this video where we talked about the Russian invasion of Ukraine and how it set everything back. A lot of things went wrong for this show. I'm not pointing fingers at any single creative force. And this brings us to Daredevil and how Marvel is finally fixing this problem. The writer and actor strike this year paused the production of Daredevil Born Again. That's the 16 episode Daredevil series that was supposed to launch next year. This pause gave Marvel time to reevaluate what they'd shot so far and they decided that basically the show sucked. According to THR, Daredevil didn't even appear in costume until episode four and they weren't happy with the tone of the series which was lighthearted and not dark like its Netflix predecessor. And I should say that for years now, Marvel Studios has been under immense pressure from Disney to make as much content as possible, cranking out more hours of programming in phase four than phases one through three combined. And the TV shows have slowly been getting worse. There were the rewritten endings of Hawkeye and Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the uneven storytelling of Moon Knight, and the sorry y'all, we ran out of time CGI on She-Hulk and Ms. Marvel. But Secret Invasion broke a lot of fans. I think fan enthusiasm for Loki has been dampened by how terrible that show was. Fans feel burned, and now Marvel is finally back on track to make it right. And the thing is, guys, Loki deserves a massive amount of fan enthusiasm. Just a few episodes in, and the show's great. That's why we created this Loki-inspired merch at our merch store, ScreenCrushMerch.com. Now, we designed these shirts ourselves. There's the variant hoodie with the Screen Crush variant logo, the usual variants t-shirt with Film and TV's most offending time travelers, Miss Minutes, Dolly Clock, Doug as Loki, and many more. Shopping our merch store is the best way you can directly support our channel and what we do here. So, as always, big thanks for watching, and check out the link below. So now, going forward, Marvel has decided to adopt a traditional TV structure. They're going to commission TV pilot scripts, hire showrunners, write show bibles, lock in scripts before they shoot them, and then they'll have executives who are full-time TV executives instead of having executives split time between movies and TV shows. Marvel producer Brad Winderbaum told THR, we need executives that are dedicated to this medium, that are going to focus on streaming, focus on television, because they are two different forms. So from now on, Marvel isn't just going to shoot a show and see what works. They're sticking to a real schedule, which should give us more moments like this. And God help us, no more moments like this. Give me your gun, goddammit. It's also revamping its development process. Showrunners will write pilots and show bibles. The days of Marvel shooting an entire series from She-Hulk to Secret Invasion, then looking at what's working and what's not, are done. Now, a little later, I want to tell you how I think Marvel should implement this new plan. But first, I want to hear from the Marvel Brain Trust, Screen Crush Editor-in-Chief Matt Singer and YouTuber Whitney Van Landingham. So that's what's happened. Now to understand what's going to happen and where we go from here, I, I have to talk to Screen Crush Editor-in-Chief Matt Singer and Whitney Van Landingham, the co-host of the brand new Guardians of the Galaxy podcast, and also you can find her on the Whitney Vision YouTube channel. So, you know, we've all read this piece from The Hollywood Reporter. I was not surprised by it. Um, Matt, I'm curious, you know, for you, you've reviewed all of these Marvel shows. You've been with them every single step of the way. For you, when did this flaw in structure become apparent that they weren't doing traditional TV, they were doing large movies cut up into pieces? I feel like the first couple of shows went well enough that you were 
you were sort of going, yeah, this, they they they, they kind of have this figured out. And then after the first few shows, I, I I don't really know what changed at that point, but it did start to feel like something did change. And when you read this article, I know my reaction was just a lot of like, oh, that makes sense. Because it felt like all the complaints, like if I went back and looked at all the things I was saying about a lot of these shows, like uh, Moon Knight and Secret Invasion and, and all of these different things, like where I was saying all of these things about how the, the tone would be all over the place or the story would be kind of choppy, you know, or like all those sorts of things. Then you would read the, the, this article and how people are quitting or being fired behind the scenes. There's yeah. power struggles behind the scenes and people yeah. can't decide what kind of show they're going to make. Or they would shoot all this stuff and then they would go in the editing room and decide it wasn't working and try to fix it with a reshoot or, or re-editing or something. And then you look back at what you saw and you go, well, that all checks out. That like, mm -hmm. I didn't know any of these details, but in hindsight, none of them were surprising after you read that piece. It sort of made sense of a lot of the issues that I was having watching these shows in real time week to week. And the book that's out now, this is called The the Reign of Marvel Studios. It's a great read. We had the uh, co-authors here on the channel last week talking about it. They also talked about how Marvel, you know, they, they exactly what's in this article. They pushed away traditional TV structure, and they did, according to this, they looked at certain projects and decided Hawkeye would be a better show than a movie, which I thought was kind of puzzling because Hawkeye was the first time I watched one of these shows, and I thought, this doesn't seem episodic. This just seems like something they've cut up into pieces. Whitney, how about you? I mean, you've covered uh, Marvel extensively yeah. <laughs> during this entire TV. What Was there a point for you when you were like, this feels wrong? Honestly, WandaVision was just such a banger straight out of the gate, and I like rode that high for a while. So like even through Hawkeye where like I did also feel like stuff was a little disjointed. It did really feel like, okay, this should have, I guess, been like a four hour movie instead of just mm -hmm. like a, an entire TV series. Um, and I, I think that I gave a lot of benefit of the doubt, especially to the earlier ones. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I kind of fell off. That one also felt really? like it should have been a movie to me. I know, okay. I know. I'm I'm one of the very few people where, like, well, it, on the was, list, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is not towards the top for me. It, it was uneven. I, I agree that there were, there were certain decisions that were made, and maybe, Matt, that goes back to what you were saying about different creative voices coming in. But I think that one had a pretty steady hand at the wheel, from what I remember. That makes sense. I just, yeah. I, yeah, I, it didn't, it didn't connect with me as much, especially because WandaVision was just so good. Um, but I, I obviously like took like a hard pivot with Secret Invasion because like I could kind of yeah. deal with all of it up until then because in every show there were really great episodes and there was like really cool stuff that was revealed and really cool plot lines that I truly enjoyed and thought did add to the overall MCU. So none of them were like a waste of time for me. I thought that they were all, you know, it's a, t it's a TV show, not the best TV show I've ever seen for some of them. But Secret Invasion Man, that just like messed me up. I had no idea why it was so dissatisfying. And the only parts that I felt were like truly amazing were just the scenes between Fury and Vara, because those were like absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. But everything else was just so disjointed, so dissatisfying. The Maria Hill thing was ridiculous. Uh, I, yeah, I, I just, that show really made me like fall off the Marvel TV show and, you know, wagon. We did a video a while back, that, and I think it made a lot of fans fall off because if you look at like Loki breakdown views on YouTube channels, not that that's the best metric, but YouTube views are a good metric of fan enthusiasm. Yeah. Eventually the views picked up, but nowhere near where they were. I in actually Loki saw your tweet one. about that, and then I started looking crazy. at people's numbers, and I was like, oh shit, this is weird. It was scary. It, it, it picked back up. We're fine, everybody. We're fine. If you're concerned at home, we're fine. We're doing all right. <laughs> but like, I thought we would have this much after two days, you know. But again, I think this. I think Loki's so good that the fans will come back for it. That's a different conversation. For sure. Um, for me, around Moon Knight is when I started to go, "Ooh, this is getting repetitive. Like every episode's the same thing." 
Ms. Marvel, at least, had its episodes where there were COVID problems and the budget was obviously less and some villain, but every episode was a different episode. Yeah. Whereas, like, Secret Invasion especially was one where the whole show seemed like it was that cut-up movie and it really, just really sucked. Matt, yeah. if Secret Invasion was this tipping point, do you, do you think that Secret Invasion was their tipping point? Because it's interesting to hear they were continuing on with Daredevil up to this point. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I guess it sounded to me, I don't know that this was explicitly stated in that article, but it, it, what it read to me like was, you know, we had these strikes, one of which is still going on. And as a result, you know, like Marvel had some time on its hands to like, everything got paused. And so they were able to look at what they had shot. So I don't know if it had as much to do with Secret Invasion as it had to do with the timing of, we've had to stop shooting everything we're shooting. Let's take a look at what what we've got because there's nothing else we can do. And when they looked at it, they realized uh, this isn't, apparently this isn't working. Who could imagine that a TV show called Daredevil that doesn't apparently, according to this article, doesn't have an appearance in costume of Daredevil uh, for the so first three or four, four. episodes. I can't yeah. imagine why that wouldn't work. What a shocker. Like, he, what he, do those episodes look like? I want yeah. to know. Uh, I right. want to know what this shit show actually looks like. Apparently, according to this article, a lighthearted legal drama. Which right. is so weird. Right. And there was, um, you know, the showrunner of Daredevil, uh, Stephen DeKnight, I believe, uh, said that the reason that he thought, he tweeted this, they changed the name to Born Again was so Disney could claim that it was a different show and not pay royalties to the original right. people. So maybe that's partially responsible for right. the change in tone. But Marvel's usually so good at giving fans what they want, you know, or at least making that attempt. So it's mm -hmm. very, it was a very strange pivot to me. The other behind the scenes things I've heard about Daredevil, and this is what's strange about this, right? When we talk about Marvel and we talk about here's this, this overall story, uh, the rumors I've heard, take them for what they are, the rumors are uh, Wilson Fisk running for mayor and the platform he's running on is anti-vigilante anti-Daredevil, anti-Spider-Man. There's all this, like, these guys in the streets. Maybe there's some kind of mini Sokovia incident that happens in New York. Hell, that sounds great. You can bring the Punisher into that. Like, that premise alone sounds fantastic to me. But there you have the influence of Marvel Studios. But again, we get back to what this article talked about, which is the hiring of the showrunners, the vision, the message. It seemed like they were more interested in, okay, so here's the parameters. Just go make a show. Yeah. Um, and now they're going to have to adapt to this traditional storytelling uh, for television. Whitney, do you think that's gonna fit? Like, are we gonna be able to get the Marvel that we have that we like, like WandaVision within this structure? Man, I hope so, because that's the thing that is just so bizarre is that they were just switching off, like, creative direction, just kind of passing it along and learning that, like, because of the strikes, obviously, I don't think for a second that Marvel or Disney did this because they felt they found it in their hearts to do the right thing it's absolutely because of the strike but like mm -hmm. they were just they weren't even having showrunners be on a through line through some of these projects and that just sucks i mean you have to let people's creative visions flourish in those situations yeah. you can't just pass it off to a bunch of different people and expect it to be cohesive so i'm very excited that they looked at it and were like oh no and then redid the started making attempts to redo it because that it's, is absolutely what needs to happen it's interesting they did it midstream because marvel will do that but they'll do it after they've wrapped photography you know they'll yeah. be like let's fix it in post let's do it later let's do it i in can't our massive believe regions. Marvel has a, ah, oh, we'll fix it in post. Like, most YouTubers do that, but not, Mar like, not Disney, come on. Ever <laughs> like, since Thor The Dark World, they've had that policy. You know, yeah. just like, oh, we'll go back and, yeah, gee, what a great job fixing that one in post, too. You know? Yeah, Jesus. Um, Matt, have you, when do you think, I know we talked a little bit about, like, um, the slow kind of, when things started to feel disjointed. Is there a point for you when you recognize like, oh gee, Marvel TV, bad. Like Marvel, Disney Plus not working. Uh, when did they lose you? I mean, I I don't know. I mean, some of the shows have had, a um, you know, problems, but they've also had good moments. Um, 
I, I I did I did think Secret Invasion was easily the worst one that they've done. Where where even with the other shows, even when there was episodes that I would get frustrated with or parts that I was frustrated with, it didn't feel like homework to to tune in to watch them. Whereas with Secret Invasion, that was the kind of thing where I really was I was struggling. Uh, if we if, if we weren't doing these kind of things, I, I I probably would have found something else to do than watch after the first couple of episodes mm -hmm. but i mean i think uh, again you it, it it's the sort of situation where you you were you were your spider sense was tingling so to speak as you're watching these things and you're going what is going on here something is off something is not right even if in a lot of cases you know there are good performances interesting you know interesting elements to all of these shows great actors you know, like I think of a show like Moon Knight, where I'm such a big Oscar Isaac fan. I loved what mm -hmm. he was doing. Same. Um, but then I watched the show, and when it was all done, I sat there and went, "Like, you have this great actor in this very interesting character. Was this really like the best use of his time and this property and this concept? You know, this character with multiple personalities and all of those sorts of elements. He doesn't know who he is." And what was the show ultimately? It was just like a big chase scene for, you know, pointless MacGuffins. It's like, mm -hmm. um, if ever a, like a character needed like a TV show, um, and not you know one story chopped up as as people are going from one place to another chasing after something, um, I kind of felt like that was it. And yeah, again, that's another element of that article that when you read it, it makes sense. This idea that they really weren't making them like TV shows; they were making them like long movies. Um, which, I mean, I suppose in some situations that could work. And like we said, the early Marvel shows were a lot of fun. They kind of came barreling out of the gate where you were like, wow, they figured this out just, just as well as they did making movies. So we talked again, extensively. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it, it really is curious how the wheels really fell off pretty quickly after those first couple of shows where all of a sudden... Every every new series, you were like, the first episode would come, and you're like, okay, that was kind of, that got some potential, and then the second episode would come out, and you'd go, okay, and then the next episode, and by the third or fourth episode, you go, well, they've only got like three episodes left to figure this out, and it's not really coming together, you know what I mean? That And that became kind of the way I would approach a lot of these shows. It would be like, you'd be very excited, the premise is great, all the people you want to see are in it, and then it was like week after week, it was just like a increasingly uh, frustrating you know, when are we going to get to the fireworks factory kind of vibe where you kept waiting for mm -hmm. everything to come together? And some of these shows are like six episodes. It's not a lot of time, especially in TV, to get your act together. And, but when we talk about all these shows, the shows that we, I think we can universally, I would guess, praise the most are WandaVision and Loki. And both of them have a traditional TV structure where every episode is different. Now, Loki, you know, you are on this like madcap chase to find he who remains. But there's an episode on Lamentus. There is an episode where they find Sylvie in the store. Like every episode does have its own thing. There's an episode at the end of time. Um, whereas everything else, like you said, Moon Knight just seemed like this long thing that was cut up and it makes people feel disconnected from the narrative and why should I have to wait a week? It also makes people just want to binge it, which is the opposite of what Disney Plus wanted when they switched to this episode by episode model. Um, Whitney, what is it you want to see Marvel TV do now? Like, is it a season two for a certain character? Is it just like take a long break? Are you dying to see Agatha and Ironheart? Like, what is it you're as a fan looking forward to the most here? I do really want to see Agatha, like so bad. I But that also is because of that WandaVision high, because Katherine Hahn was just so amazing in that. So of course I want to see that follow up, but also at this point, I'm a little scared because I don't want it to be bad. And a bunch of other, you know, it just, it, Secret Invasion really is like the part where I'm just like, please God, I can't sit through another one of those. Like, you know, like Matt was just saying, every other show has like redeemable qualities, but, I just could not get behind Secret Invasion. So if they can do Agatha correctly, I want to see that so bad. I also think that it's just really smart of them to hold off on Ironheart until that one is made well, too, because of the success of, you know, Wakanda Forever and all that. Like, they want to keep that momentum going. Well, so Ironheart I think it's smart that they're doing last these. year, and now it's being pushed to next year. Yeah. Typically... Studios don't sit on a winner for two years. You know what I, I mean? Know. Like I'm not. No, I, it's I've heard true. good things. 
I've heard secondhand information from cast members that they really like it, but what are they going to say, you know? Yeah. Um, I just, I'm look, I and then you look at Wakanda Forever, when I look at that movie, I think the worst thing about it was that they shoehorned this character in for a spinoff. Like, it felt like a backdoor yeah. pilot for Riri Williams. Um, Matt, what about you? Like, is there anything in particular you like, super excited to see as, like, a comic book fan critic? I don't know. I guess I'm most curious now after reading that article about seeing if anything changes when these shows come out. Is it going to feel are they going to feel different or is it going to continue in the in the trajectory that it's been on? You know, um, I mean, I was sort of curious about what this Daredevil show was going to look like. I, I mean, it's funny how when you described, Ryan, what the show originally what they shot, which they're now mostly discarding what it was going to be, because it's nothing like the Daredevil Born Again comic. Which is a great comic, which I would have loved to have seen, uh, you know, the TV version of that. So, yeah, I mean, that's to me the main issue is like, what's going to, what what are we going to see now when these shows that they've shot or they're working on now, when they come out, are they going to feel more like Loki and WandaVision? Are they going to feel more like a, a you know, a, a standard episodic television series? Or is it going to kind of continue in the same vein as your Secret Invasions or your Moon Knights or your Ms. Marvels? Although I thought that one was probably the best of those shows. So, uh, you I know, that's... Ms. Marvel, Marvel had yeah. some it was great... Really it had some good episodes, stuff in yeah. it. Yeah, it had some good and stuff. And I also just it. think that Iman Vellani's, like, enthusiasm for it was so contagious and right. so palpable yeah, right. that it was, like, impossible for me right. not to like her just because of, like, both her character and who she was and how excited she was in all the interviews about it. She was adorable. Back to Secret Invasion, the one thing we know from that is throwing money at something does not fix it. Uh, it, it seemed like that it. core the, the got rotten pretty quick. Um, looking forward, like looking back at Daredevil, I think we were all looking forward to that. 16 episodes, born yeah. again, they're taking the Netflix thing, it's a perfect cast, we all love Daredevil. How do you, how, it's just, the, the idea that they're going to go back to showrunners and pilot scripts makes so much sense because apparently they didn't do that with Daredevil. <laughs> How do you have three episodes without Dare and then and then just greenlight that? Like, yeah, that sounds good. It's to like, me, it almost sounds their like homework it was, on this. <laughs> it was, seems just it was compartmentalized and that they didn't. They just had to go, go, go. And we talked a lot about this last week and uh, at our Secret Invasion kind of what the hell happened video. Disney's pumped the brakes. Like once Iger came back in, uh, they realized like, hey, we're really hurting the brand on Marvel and to a certain extent Star Wars. So I'm glad they've done that. Um, as a fan, I, I kind of get the impression from other fans just based on what I've read on social media and stuff, fans seem okay with it. We'd rather wait a little longer than to get a stinker. Um, yeah. I don't know though if the brand is permanently damaged after Secret Invasion or not, at least the Disney Plus brand. Do you guys think there's a, for, a future for Marvel TV, should they even keep doing this or should they do things like Werewolf by Night? Matt, what do you think? Where's where their strength for success in this? I mean, I would be shocked if they uh, if they decided to stop making TV shows altogether. I do think we've already kind of seen uh, definitely that they've kind of slowed down the, the output of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's tricky because the serialized nature of comic books is perfect for television. Like, mm -hmm. in a way, it's kind of remarkable that they figured out how to be so successful making movies when comics were always more adaptable, at least structurally, to TV. I mean, one of the, mm -hmm. you could say it as a positive or negative, but one of the things Marvel did when they made movies was they kind of turned movies into television, at least the kind of episodic, every film leads into the next film kind of structure of it all. So I, I don't see why... Marvel can't make good shows and they've proven they can. They've made a couple of good shows. So to me it's it's yeah, I think it's less about abandoning television as it is maybe slowing the amount of stuff in general. Not maybe not just in TV, but TV and movies and taking a a close look at what they're making, how they're making it, and maybe also like who it's about. You know, like not that I don't love seeing these random characters um, getting their own shows. I mean, for me, some of the, that's some of the most fun because I love the weird, strange, quirky characters of Marvel. Um, but maybe not all of them need their own 10 episode television series, perhaps. Yeah. Maybe, and maybe the audience doesn't necessarily want that. You know what I mean? I think we've proven that as far as fatigue, it has like, I think phase four of the MCU had more hours of programming than phase one through three combined. 
So it's interesting, Whitney, we talk about, oh my God, there's only six episodes. How do you get to know this story in six episodes? But on the flip side of that, there's, oh, do I have to watch 10 episodes of She-Hawk to understand the next Avengers movie? Where yeah. do you think that line lives? Like, do you think that we're better off with longer seasons that maybe affect the movies less so they don't feel like homework? Or should we stick to shorter content? I mean, I just really think that it ultimately depends on the quality because if it's a quality show, I don't mind doing the homework because then it doesn't feel like homework. But obviously, it is a huge problem if they're going to continue on, which it sounds like they're not. It sounds like they're going to try. I hope that they try. I hope that they succeed. But if they had just continued pumping out these, like, it's almost like they're just feeding comic books into, like, a manufactured system and just bullshit is just keeps popping out instead mm. of taking time to like handcraft that shit you know and really put time into it and really put love into it because you can feel it you can just feel the difference and i do think that we need kind of a break because it is it does it is starting to feel like homework because there's just so much and you don't want to have to spend hours and hours and hours of your life just to be able to see the marvels when it comes out in theaters you know like mm -hmm. you you might not want that but i do think that you would want it if the content was good so i'm torn i just don't want them to do it with any more shitty shows but as long as they really do fix the process in that case i'm down going back to 2021 nobody was saying oh god another marvel maybe because we'd had a year without anything yeah but 2021 we had off the top of my head, I think five shows, counting What If. We had three movies. Uh, Black Widow was even a hybrid release, and we were down for it. And looking back, I mean, Matt, I know you didn't like The Eternals. We've had discussions about that, but it's leagues better than Secret Invasion. And as much oh, as people yeah. might not like Hawkeye, uh, it's a lot better than Secret Invasion. Yeah, I apologize you know? for what I said about The Eternals before I knew that Secret Invasion was the way it was. <laughs> Exactly, and this I year don't, you know, I don't. I don't apologize. I, have, I don't take back <laughs> anything. Uh, I don't, uh, see, what, I don't see what one has to do with the other. No, no, no. They, they don't directly infect the other. But like when you're talking about a slope of quality, I think that they definitely. I thought they had hit a low point with um, a lot of stuff that like from twenty, like Thor: The Dark World. But boy, they proved me wrong. So Matt Whitney, thank you very both very much for joining me. Their socials are below. Matt is also the author of the upcoming Cisco and Ebert biography, Opposable Thumbs. Can't wait to read it. Thanks, guys. Now, we're all excited about Marvel TV raising their bar of excellence, and movie producers focusing on movies means that the quality of the film should rise as well. But I want to see these two sides of Marvel seamlessly integrated, like they were at the start of Phase 2. You see, very briefly, Marvel Studios Film and Television Studios were coordinated by the Marvel Creative Committee. Very long story short, this system fell apart because of internal Marvel politics. But the height of this, for me, was when the show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. ended on a cliffhanger that was resolved two days later when The Winter Soldier was released, and then to see the epilogue of the Winter Soldier, you had to watch the next episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's gotta be some sort of activation signal to Hydra members within S.H.I.E.L.D. So coordination like that is really difficult on a network TV schedule, but they pulled it off. And I would think that they would be able to do this more often with a streaming service because they have not promised advertisers to sell ad time on any of these shows. So what I wanna see for the Daredevil show is a full coordination with the next Spider-Man film. Like I said, rumor has it that the show would have shown Wilson Fisk running for mayor, railing against vigilantes like Spider-Man, and we are dying to see Spider-Man and Daredevil team up, this time in costume. I'm a really good lawyer. So I would love to see this new Daredevil series lead to a mayoral election and a gang war that is resolved in the next Spider-Man film. They already teased that the next Spider-Man movie would be more street level and maybe violence breaks out across the city. So Peter is desperate. So he turns to the darker, more powerful Venom symbiote since he doesn't have Tony Stark's armor to rely on anymore. And that symbiote then imitates the darker heroes from the Daredevil show like him and the Punisher. Like this is just a taste of the kind of crossover potential that Marvel has, and they have barely scratched the surface. Well, let me know, what do you think Marvel will do next? What kind of TV shows do you wanna see? What TV show do you wanna see get a season two? Let me know in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe, smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.